Today we're going to take a look behind the curtain of the gun control media and see how their strings are pulled. Sit by and watch this episode of Guns and Gadgets to learn more. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. This video today is brought to us by the Warrior Poet Society Network. The Warrior Poet Society Network, if you're not familiar with them yet, I'll have a link down below and a code where you can join for 10% off your monthly cost. Code is GG10, that's all down below and a link in the pinned comment. But the Warrior Poet Society Network uh, is a place where you can go and consume content based around freedom. There's a lot of cool quality television series and shows there, as well as some direct training from John Lovell himself and Pistol and Rifle, and there's other stuff on there like Close Quarters Combat. There's a lot of good quality information there, and some of the best names in the freedom industry are there as well. Thank you to the Warrior Poet Society Network for being a sponsor and a friend. And uh, check them out with the link down below. It would mean a lot to all of us. Let's get into this little uh, video here. It's not going to be a long one, but... There's always a narrative out there when it comes to the ultra-left talking points, and they're fed to the media. Insert whatever topic you want, there's always some type of talking head bullet points that are put out by the uh, the Democrat Party. And you see it, you've, you've seen it now, where they put all the videos on the screen, like 16 of them, they're all saying the same thing at the same pace, the same content. Well, when it comes to gun control, it's no different. Now, over the uh, leading up to the 4th of July weekend, the uh, curator of the gun control movement, Michael Bloomberg, his group, Every Town for Gun Safety, did just that about gun violence. There's no such thing as gun violence. I've said it numerous times. There is violence that is perpetrated where they use the gun. But there's no such thing as gun violence. But Michael Bloomberg's Every Town for Gun Safety put out talking points for the media to use over the 4th of July weekend. And I'm going to show you them real quick. And I want you to think about the stories you've seen over the last week. And you, I'm sure you've seen some of these talking points, because I know I have. So this is right on the Every Town for Gun Safety website. And the press release was actually on July 2nd. And it's suggestions for covering holiday weekend gun violence in context. And don't forget, this is the same group, Every Town, that interviewed all of the potential vice president candidates for Joe Biden to see just who was the most anti-gun. You might remember that series of videos I did talking about those people. Uh, but this is exactly what they do. They want to feed the information, the propaganda to the media so that people will consume it and believe it. This is why we need to see through this stuff. And they hit on, you know, lax gun laws and COVID-19 and the 4th of July weekend. And then they say, as your newsroom prepares for weekend coverage, below are a few suggestions. The first one you can see is, Cover the options cities have for fighting gun violence, including spending federal COVID relief to fund evidence-informed community violence intervention programs. And I know here in the Boston area, we saw a lot of that, especially during the 4th of July holiday. Number two is include context about the policies state lawmakers are considering or passed during the 2021 legislative session that may impact gun violence. Now, I saw some of this pop up in some of the states that have recently passed Constitutional Carry or Second Amendment Preservation Act, and uh, you might have seen that in your area as well. Number three is include context on the comprehensive strategy recently announced by the Biden-Harris administration to combat gun violence. And I still see that today when they talk about any shootings that happen in the Boston area. And real quick, in the, in the notes you can see they talk about the new strike forces, uh, that they made with the ATF, that was the same issue they just had in Chicago, which was the video I did with uh, with Braden. They talk about new efforts to hold rogue gun dealers accountable for violating federal laws. All the same talking points, just reworded. Number four is report on the ways the gun lobby and its allies in Congress and state houses have undermined law enforcement efforts to combat gun violence. Well, that hasn't happened, but if you say something enough, no matter how false it is, people will believe it. It will eventually become true in their eyes. And they specifically mention here that this year several states passed permitless carry bills despite opposition from law enforcement and laws explicitly prohibiting and punishing law enforcement for helping to enforce federal gun laws. No mention that these gun laws are unconstitutional and Biden's new federal attempts at gun laws are even more unconstitutional. None of that. Again, the truth they don't want out there. They just want the narrative to be put out. 
Number five is include ATF data on the sources of gun crimes recovered in your state. Now this would vary in each state obviously, but it's very possible you saw some of that reporting during the past week. Number six is cover the ongoing conversations in the U.S. Senate about background check legislation and ask senators where they stand. Now this is a big one because they know that nothing is getting through the Senate. The Senate is deadlocked uh, as long as the filibuster still stands, but this is every town's attempt to try to sway some of those senators like Joe Manchin or Kristen Sinema uh, to get the filibuster changed in order to help force these bills through. Seven is report on the ways the COVID-19 pandemic continues to exasperate key drivers of gun violence as infections decline. Again, absolute lies, absolute propaganda, but if you say it enough, people will believe it. Okay, uh, almost done, just four more. Number eight, note the ways that the increase in gun sales over the past year has strained the background check system. <laughs> this is a funny one. It says, in addition, while the background check system worked as intended and denied a record number of prohibited purchasers during the pandemic, the loopholes, everything's a loophole with these people, the loopholes in the law have been exasperated and accelerated during the COVID-19 pandemic due to an unprecedented surge in people seeking firearms, whether a gun dealer, a stranger online, or companies selling unregulated do-it-yourself firearms kits. So this is a shot at 80% lowers, and as well as another hint to try to get rid of the deadline the FBI has for NICS checks. Number nine is fact check efforts to blame increases in gun violence on protests or criminal justice reform. That's the reason that there is an uptick in crime, especially in all of your Democrat controlled cities. But look how they program the media. Attempts to shift blame for increasing gun violence to Black Lives Matter protests or criminal justice reform measures are based in politics, not facts. No, not really. This is the same government that let neighborhoods burn but if you went to church, they would put you in jail. All a tug at the heartstrings of people who don't look for the truth their self. Two more. The tenth one is center the work of community-led gun violence intervention programs which have successfully reduced violence by implementing data-informed locally-led strategies. This is BS. It's a way to try to reroute funds and defund the police uh, and increase the amount of taxes you pay because they are just printing money in the Biden administration. And lastly, seek out the perspective of gun violence survivors and use a trauma-informed approach to interviews. That's a big one. You'll see this every night on the news. They always play on the heartstrings and what happened to this person or this person's child is terrible, so everybody must pay. If you haven't seen the video I did yesterday, it directly surrounds part of this and I think you might benefit from seeing that, especially if you are in law enforcement, you should probably watch that video. Uh, it's time to get on the right side. Uh, that link will be above. I just wanted to show everybody that this is every town for gun safety, telling the left media, all of the Democrat cities and all the Democrat channels, exactly how to report on anything that happened with related to firearms uh, on the 4th of July weekend. And I want to know down below if you saw any of this. Did any of this spark a little light bulb to go off and say, hey, I remember that. Or if you can do a quick search in your local uh, newspapers about bloody 4th of July, because they use that term, bloody. Uh, and you'll probably see some of this come up. Let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you saw any articles in your area down below or watched any news broadcasts. I'm, I'm sure you all will be surprised at how many people mention it down below. Thank you for your time. I hope this helps to open your eyes if you're one of the new gun owners who um, this might be new to you. You might not realize that this has been going on. And uh, that is what I hope to do is to educate you all so that you can see the truth for what it is. And if you're interested in truth on the Second Amendment, please consider subscribing to Guns and Gadgets. This is where you'll find that information. And also, please don't forget to check out the Warrior Poet Society. Links are down below as well as a code to save you money. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.